David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another video. Uh, this past weekend was the DC Pen Show, which bills itself as the largest pen gathering in the world. Uh, it's one of my favorite shows to attend, and I thought that I would talk a little bit about the show itself, then show you some of the things that I brought home with me that you will very well likely see reviewed in the upcoming months. Uh, to begin with, uh, DC is one of my favorite cities to visit. Um, it's about a five hour drive from where I live. Uh, once you arrive in town, coming in from the south on the 395, you, you come around a corner and all of a sudden you're presented with a pretty cool sight. Uh, you see the Pentagon, the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson Memorial, and the Capitol Building, just like all at the same time. Uh, it's pretty neat. When I first came into town, I went to Farney's, which is a brick and mortar pen store a block and a half away from the White House. There aren't a lot of physical pen stores around, so if I'm near one, I typically try to take the time to check it out. Uh, it's a pretty neat place that I would highly recommend checking out if you're ever in the area. Uh, the show is held about 20 minutes from the National Mall at the Marriott Fairview Park. The hotel is undergoing some major construction which had caused a bit of concern leading up to the show. Uh, you see, there is one large ballroom located on the ground floor of the hotel. Uh, this is where the majority of the exhibitors were located. Um, in previous years, there was a secondary room on the same floor, but that room was actually being used as the main lobby in the restaurant. The makeshift restaurant area did not offer much in the way of usable socializing space. Uh, that was the biggest downside of the show for me, the lack of a pen show after dark meeting place. On top of that, they closed up the restaurant and kicked everyone out around 10.30 or 11 p.m., which is typically just when pen show after dark is kicking into gear. Uh, hopefully that issue will be resolved once construction is finished. So the exhibitors who would have normally be in bed in that room were put downstairs. Uh, downstairs consisted of one larger room and a long hallway. Um, I felt the show organizers did a good job of adding signage upstairs as well as uh, even in the elevators in an effort to direct folks downstairs. Um, overall, I feel the show was run very well this year. They put a few well-known vendors downstairs like uh, Galen Leather, Jonathan Brooks, Ian Schoen uh, that would help draw attendees down there. And I felt that that worked. Um, I like the variety of vendors that you have at this show. Um, all of the major companies were represented, but then also you have a large number of individual artisans as well as retailers with a wide variety of items like crab pen holders or cat pen holders. Uh, you'd never know what you might come across at a large show like this. Uh, there were a few cool new discoveries. Next to the Galen table was another artisan from Turkey who had the most beautiful hand-painted Caveco sports. Uh, there were some with flowers, others with some nice roses. Uh, but the ones I really liked were the ones with goldfish. Uh, and then there were these dragonflies that were just incredible. Uh, the surface wasn't just painted, there was some marbling paper applied as well. So it had a bit of texture to it in addition to the paint. Um, I was very surprised she still had some pieces left at the end of the show. Uh, I'll put a link in the notes below to her Instagram page if you're interested in some eye candy. Uh, she is a very talented artist. Uh, at Ryan Krusak's table, he was introducing a, a new look to some of his pens. Um, he started engraving more intricate designs on the caps of some of his scrimshaw pens uh, and other pens as well that really fit well with the overall nautical theme. This Gaelic knot pattern was really sharp as well. Uh, Yost from Applebaum had a table. It was really nice to meet someone who I've corresponded with and worked with for a very long time. But with him was his nib specialist, Annabelle Hiller. Uh, one of my absolute highlights of this show was checking out her work. Uh, she has a background in jewelry making and what you are looking at here is one of her creations. It's a nib made from sterling silver. Um, it does have some iridium tipping on the end, but everything else is silver. It's just one solid piece, uh, and everything you see here is hand hammered and hand engraved. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of art, and it writes amazingly well. 
Uh, what's very cool is that Annabelle can take an existing piece of jewelry, something like a solid gold or sterling silver, and she can melt it down and turn it into an incredible nib uh, with a Yovo housing that you could actually use on a pen. Uh, that would be a really cool way to turn a special keepsake into a functioning tool that you could even get more use out of. I just think that that idea is great. There were several events and seminars at the show as well. Uh, there was a meeting of the esteemed Black Pen Society, which is always a regal affair. Uh, and then on Friday night, there was a neat event called Nib Wars, where four top nib smiths, including the aforementioned Annabelle, competed in a series of nib grinding challenges. Uh, it was fun to see something new and unique like that. Uh, it was a close contest, which was won by Josh Lax. On Saturday evening, I joined the gang from the DC Pen Club who have an annual dinner uh, where we took over a large portion of a nearby restaurant. Uh, shows are a great place to reconnect with old friends as well as make new ones. Uh, okay, one more thing before show and tell. Uh, I know that I've mentioned this before during DC show recaps, but it's been about four years, so I thought I would mention it again. Uh, the very first thing I typically do whenever I visit DC is to head down to the Lincoln Memorial. Um, it's one of my favorite places on the National Mall. I like to check out Abe for a while. Uh, if you turn to the left, engraved on the wall is the Gettysburg Address, and on the opposite wall is Lincoln's second inaugural speech. Both speeches talk about bringing the country together in a time of marked divisiveness. Uh, it's a message that was important 150 years ago and is even more important and relevant today. Uh, I typically stand where Martin Luther King stood and looked out on the reflecting pool and, and I kind of imagine what it would have been like to be there on that historic day. Uh, then I head over to the Vietnam Memorial. It's only a couple hundred yards away, but it feels a world away from the hustle and bustle of the Lincoln Memorial area. Um, I walk up to one of the reference books and I look up a name. I know where the name is on the wall, but I still look it up anyways. Uh, the memorial is a beautiful monument that offers a place of quiet reflection on those lost during the Vietnam War. I didn't know anyone who lost their lives in the war, but there is someone on the wall that I visit and it is someone with my exact name. First, middle, and last. Uh, he passed away only a couple of months after I was born. Army Staff Sergeant David Allen Parker was a Special Forces medic from San Angelo, Texas, who in early 1968 volunteered for an eight-man surveillance mission, and it cost him his life. I feel that the least I can do is stop by whenever I'm in town and say hello. Okay. Let's actually take a look at some of the things I brought home with me from the show, and in order to do so, please join me over here at Camera 2. As I mentioned, one of my favorite things it shows is reconnecting with old friends as well as making new ones. Um, I had lots of people come up and say hi, and uh, it was really nice meeting everyone. I had a couple of folks give me some artwork, uh, and unfortunately, I can't remember the names of uh, either of the folks that uh, gave these to me, but I appreciate it. There is Wonder Woman here. Uh, and then this piece of art here, let me put it sideways. I know it's sideways, but I at least want to fit it in the frame. Uh, and this is Baron Samady, which was a James Bond character in the movie Live and Let Die. Uh, and uh, I just thought this was a really nice artwork. I did pick up a t-shirt from Shown Design, which has uh, Gritty, who's the Philadelphia Flyers mascot, as well as Pocky, which is the Shown Design mascot. And then I did pick up lots of ink. So there's gonna be ink reviews coming up here in the near future. Um, first of all, I haven't even opened this up yet, but this is the brand new Colorverse set. Uh, and this is the Butterfly Nebula, as well as the NGC 6302. Um, and this is the, the special Nebula ink that was just uh, released. Uh, and look forward to sharing that in the fairly near future. I picked up a bottle from Mike from Ink Dependence of his ink that he produced, which is from Pannonia and is called Cheerio Water Bus. Uh, I'm a big fan of that uh, blue-green color here, and I'm looking forward to playing with that ink. This is the DC Super Show Violet, which was the special edition ink for this year. 
Then we have a limited edition Robert Oster ink from Van S called Van S Venom, which is a green with some shimmer in it. You can see it has some yellow shimmer in that one. Then we had a bunch of inks from Galen Leather. Uh, there was a couple of inks from KWZ, which is this Sapphire Blue, as well as the Old Mauve. And then there was three Robert Oster inks, which were the Admiral Blue, the Sooty Shearwater, and the Rust Orange. Uh, the Rust Orange looked really nice as well. And then the Sooty Shearwater, again, was kind of one of those blue greens that uh, I've been fond of lately. So uh, I'm looking forward to playing with these as well. Speaking of Galen Leather, I have a few things from them. Uh, there is a small case right here that zippers open. I know you really can't see it that much or see the entire thing, but there is a magnet on this side. So you close it with the magnet and then this, the, the recent addition is this uh, elastic piece here and so it can sit down. Again, I know that barely fits in the frame, but this comes out as well. But you can kind of uh, sit it up here and it's really nice. Uh, there is a larger Magnum Opus case. Yes, I realize that barely fits in the screen, but it's the same thing where it has the elastic on the back. Uh, and I'll show this in detail in a review. And finally, there is this banker's bag. Again, I know it barely fits in here, but when you open it up, there is a nice uh, thing in here where you can put a notebook as well as hold some pens. Speaking of pens, let's go ahead and take a look at some. Uh, first of all, um, as I was heading up to the show, I actually stopped off at Goulet Pens uh, and did a little something for one of their upcoming pen casts that you'll see here in the near future. But I picked up a pen, and that would be the Namiki Golden Pheasant. Um, this is in the uh, Nippon Art series, and the Mackie work on this pen is just amazing. Then in regard to pens that we picked up at the show, or at least we picked up for review, um, I have a few here. I have three in the Mont Blanc Glacier series. And forgive me, I don't know the names of each of them yet, but you can see here that there's three different pens in this series. Let's go ahead and set those over here. Uh, then I had three pens from Zizo, which are uh, different than any of their pens that I had seen them come out with before. Uh, this, I believe, is called the Harlequin series, or maybe it has a different name, but uh, the design is kind of a Harlequin design. And so we have these three pens from Zizo, and I'll at least be giving a couple of those away when those get reviewed. Then we have a pen from Magna Carta, which is the Libertatum. Uh, there's three different versions of this pen. This one is called the Lord series. Then we have a pen from Narwhal. Uh, this is an exclusive for Galen Leather. This is the Narwhal X Galen Rose Gold Demonstrator. Uh, then something from Applebaum uh, is an Auto Hut number no. seven, which is a very nice sterling silver pen. Then from Conklin, we have uh, three pens from their Trees of the World series. Um, there is the Avenue of the Baobus. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it or not, but uh, the, uh, close enough for right now. Then this one here is the Dragon Tree. And then finally here is the Giant Sequoia. Then we have one more pen from Narwhal, which is a, a brand new release of theirs, which is the Narwhal Original Plus, which is a vacuum filler, as you can see. Uh, and this one's going to be reviewed very soon. Two more to go. Uh, next up, we had a pen from Sean Newton. Uh, this was a custom pen that he had made called the Ohm. Um, we're going to be, uh, I'll be reviewing this and talking a bit about uh, Sean Newton and the work that he can do and then be giving this away. Uh, and so look forward to a giveaway of this very nice pen in the near future. And then finally, I had mentioned that, uh, you know, new discoveries are something that are always fun to make when it comes to the pen show. And I found something very unique from a company in India, which was called Acriv, A-C-R-I-V. And that is this pen right here. It has a couple of things going for it. First of all, it has a titanium nib. Uh, it is a in-house titanium nib. But then look down here. There are three 
ink chambers. And the idea behind this pen is that you can put different colors in ink one, each one of these chambers uh, and then the ink will mix. So in theory, if I put a blue ink and a yellow ink, then it should come out green. And that since uh, it has a titanium nib, uh, that there won't be any adverse effects if any of the inks should happen to interact with each other. So um, I look forward to testing this one out. I have some questions about if there'll be backwash and if the colors will be mixed, uh, kind of mix in, in the chambers. But something like this is uh, a, an experiment that I look forward to taking a closer look at. So as you can see, we have a number of pens coming up here in the near future that'll be reviewed, uh, and a number of these will be given away as well. Um, coming up in the next couple of weeks, I, I will be attending the San Francisco show. Um, I have not been to that show. I've always heard that it's the fun show. So I, uh, you know, I'm originally from California, so it's always good to get back home. Uh, but if you happen to see me at the San Francisco show, make sure to say hi. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you later.